Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Joyful Kitchen where we just enjoy food. So let's enjoy this delicious homemade Easter bun. So I'm going to start by working on the dry ingredients. So first I'm going to sift four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And for the remainder of my dry ingredients, I have some baking powder, salt, some baking spice, same thing as mixed spice, cinnamon powder, ginger powder, and some nutmeg. I'm using freshly grated, fresh is best, but if you have grounded, you can use that instead. Now that we have our dry ingredients prepped, we're gonna start working on our wet ingredients. So to my pot here, I'm going to add 3 quarters of a cup of Guinness. Now for the liquid, you can either use the Guinness, like what we use here, Dragon Stout. Or for a non-alcoholic version, you can even use Malta. Next, I'm going to add my brown sugar. And the good thing about making your own homemade bun, you can make this as sweet as you want. I don't like my bun to be too sweet, so I'm just adding a half a cup. One tablespoon of jam, and this is just strawberry jam, but any jam or jelly can be used really. Some honey. Quick tip to prevent your ingredients like your honey from sticking to your spoon, just spray or rub a little bit of oil in it. Some molasses, and remember guys, all the ingredients will be listed in the description box below. Some vanilla extract, some browning for color, just a half a tablespoon because I don't want my bun to be too dark. And then finally some butter and that's unsalted butter. Now I'm going to heat this on low heat just so that our ingredients can dissolve. Please note we're not going to boil it, we just want to heat it through just so our ingredients can dissolve. And make sure that you break up that jam so that it can dissolve properly. And this smells so good already guys. So now that everything is nicely melted and dissolved, we're going to set this aside and allow it to cool a little bit. And then we're going to work on our final ingredient which is our yeast. Now guys, I am using active dry yeast, not instant. There's a difference. If you are using instant yeast, then you would add it directly to your dry ingredients mixture except the salt because the salt will kill the yeast. You'd add the salt to your wet ingredients. So because I'm using active dry yeast and not instant, I would have to proof it, which is the same thing as blooming the yeast. So in order to proof your yeast, your water would have to be between 105 degrees to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have a thermometer, you can go ahead and test it with that. I don't, so I do my personal little remedy, which I like to call the finger test. Which is just inserting my finger directly into the water. And if I can do this comfortably, then I know that the water is hot enough or good enough for the yeast to proof. Now, please note that it should be hot or warm, not lukewarm. So I just heated this in my microwave. And I'm gonna add just a half a teaspoon of granulated sugar. We need the sugar to help the yeast to proof. And then I'm gonna go in with a tablespoon of my yeast. By the way, if you were using instant yeast, it would be the same amount. Now I'm gonna cover this with a little piece of plastic wrap because we have to keep it warm. And I'm gonna place a dish towel over it as well and leave this for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes of proofing, this is what we have. Alright, so our yeast is nicely proofed or bloomed and ready to be used. And I'll make sure to leave the instructions if you were using active yeast as opposed to instant yeast in the description along with the ingredients. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is to just add some raisins and some mixed fruits or mixed peel. 
to my flour mixture so they will be more evenly distributed once I start to make the dough. Now, this is optional. Some people don't like all that in their bun. You can completely leave this out or you can do as much or as little as you'd like. But this is Easter bun and it's normally loaded with a lot of raisins and fruits and all of that. So I like to add it to mine. For the raisins, I soaked in a little bit of rum and wine. I have a video that shows you how to do this. I'll go ahead and link it for you guys so you can check it out if you're interested. Now, I will be using my stand mixer to make my bun. But if you have a hand mixer with the dough attachment or the dough hook, you can use that as well. So in goes my flour. One egg, which I'm just gonna beat before I add it in. And my yeast. So I'm gonna start on low and then slowly pour my mixture in. Start on low so that you don't get your flour all over. And your liquid should still be warm. You can use the finger test, which I showed you earlier with the yeast. You wanna make sure that you keep your dough warm. Right, this helps it to rise. So you add your liquid in gradually and then you can gradually increase your speed. I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my surface and just use my hands to work the dough a little. Now, you'll know that your dough is perfect once it's a little bit sticky, but it doesn't really stick to your fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of oil to my bowl here. This is just a little bit of vegetable oil. And this will prevent our dough from sticking while we leave it to rise. Right, any neutral oil can be used. Neutral meaning that it doesn't have any flavor. I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap. Now you need to place your dough in a warm area of your kitchen and leave it to rise for at least one hour. It should double in size after that. It may take longer because of the richness of the dough. It has a lot of spices and all of that. Just be patient. What I personally like to do is to heat my oven to about 150, turn it off, and then place my dough inside to rise. And depending on the climate where you live, you may have to heat your oven more than once. All right guys, so I allowed the dough to rise for an hour and a half total. And as you can see, it has doubled in size. Now I'm going to deflate it by just punching down and just and this actually helps to remove the excess air and this is still warm I'm gonna place a tiny bit of flour on my surface So what I'm going to do now is to try to shape it in a nice little loaf or kind of kind of like a log and place this into my baking tin. And this doesn't have to be perfect. So if you want, you can actually Cut your dough in two and make two smaller buns. I'm making one large bun. This is a 12 by 6 loaf pan. And since we handled the dough a little bit, I'm just going to leave this to rest for another 15 minutes before I place it in my oven and bake it. 
Right before I place this in my oven, I'm going to brush on some melted butter and jam so that it can have a nice glossy sheen and finish. You could also use some honey as well. Mine is finished. I used the last bit of it to make this bun. So I'm just using some of my jam instead. And now I'm going to bake this for about 50 minutes on 350. After 50 minutes in the oven, our bun is done and my kitchen smells amazing. I'm just going to brush on the rest of that glaze that we made earlier. And you want to do this while your bun is still hot. And once this has cooled, I'm going to cut into it and show you guys. I have a no yeast Easter bun video, I'll leave it here for you guys. Also, check out this playlist here with other Easter recipes. Remember to like the video, share and subscribe and visit the website and follow me on my other socials. All links are in the description down below. Thanks for watching and until next time, live life to the fullest and just enjoy food.